Amendment. So you like my hat then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, thanks for talking to us. No Appreciate problem. Thank you very much. God, it makes me sick even looking at this well, place work, but even a hideous tool will set you free. All right, so we came upon these signs and these activists here. It's a little bit of a different message than anything else we've seen thus far today. It drew my attention, something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, what are you guys' names and what is your mission here today? My name is Robert Rudnick and I'm uh, here to be as a repentant man. I mean, we're okay with the Proud Boys. We're repentant men. We're trying to talk about the we need to repent of this national sin of uh, it's a it's a genocide, and the, the repentance will be resistance. Right. And what what would that resistance entail? That resistance would entail just men getting together because it's a man's issue because it's a war, getting together and saying uh, you know this is going to stop. Going to their local death camp and saying no, it's over, it's done. Because all this evil we see manifesting is. Uh, Covenantal blood guilt curses because of this and so we get to the root and the other stuff falls into place if We don't do this. We really need God right now We need to be under providential protection and provision and so that we're convinced this is the root So what is a radical a radical is one who gets to the root of the matter? This is the root of the matter everything else is blood guilt curses and so they, So what, 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 what has been the reaction from people passing by this far with your message? I've been doing this for decades, and this is the most positive response I've ever had in the United States. I normally do this in Africa, in Uganda, and Kenya, where my family is. I get a positive response there. But in all these decades, I've never had people receive it so warmly and so openly. And so our main message, yes, we're supporting uh, Trump, but mostly we're here to preach repentance. And to us, what repentance looks like is we abolish legalized abortion on the individual level and even if the Supreme Court doesn't do it some people say they will or they won't but we should never have obeyed them in the first place when when they told Texas in 1973 to, to kill their children and to legalize geno uh, genocide we should have said no so so we're saying the preborn deserve the same defense as the born just like if someone was going to kill your child we should defend them. So I'll say that when I, I, when I speak to people about this issue uh, who don't agree with you, who are pro-choice, whatever you want to call it, um, I think the biggest obstacle I get when I have a conversation with them is I try to get them to define a boundary, right? As, as depending on who you talk to, they'll actually say, oh, well, I think it's abortion at this point, on this day or this week, or it's the day of birth. Right, and, and, and then and when I can pin them to a day, then they go, well, that's my day, but I don't want to tell someone else they can't do this. What do you think is the biggest obstacle to convincing people that your argument is the moral one? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, most of us do not understand law. Uh, and, and this is the problem. There are, there are two categories that you can be in. You can be life or you can be property. Ha oh, what, uh, there are more babies and uh, black babies being killed by abortion in New York than are being born. We have to get out to the black community and say, guys, do you realize this is slavery? They are, they're, they're defining your children as property. They're taking their baby parts and they're helping people with research and it's all kind of stuff. You're not getting any money from this. You do not want to begin. There's nothing in the world that begins as property and then becomes a life. It's either one or the other. One of the big things about COVID, we're going to start to see the bad effects of the left. We're going to start to see the vaccines. You want to work, you have to wear the mask. Well, no, no, you have to get the vaccine. Blacks are scared of the vaccine, but now if they want to work, they have to do it. Basically, they're, they're kind of bringing them in, and they're losing their people. They're losing their people. 60%. So, I agree, I, but I, I, have, I have a little bit of, of a slightly modification of that. Uh, my, my, my answer, I think the biggest obstacle to convincing people uh, to identify with the preborn is that emotional identification. They don't identify with what's going on in the womb because they can't see it. They can't see it. And I think that's the reason as a Christian for the incarnation. God, uh, they call Jesus the second Adam, but he didn't come as a fully formed man like the first Adam was created according to the Bible. He was going through all the stages of development in the womb of Mary. So uh, he became an infant to identify with infants. And if you can identify with a person who's defenseless, 
and has no one to defend them and requires other people to defend them emotionally, then that changes the whole paradigm. And if you, so if you can find some way when you're talking with those people to make them see that there's a principle in the, in the universe, if they don't want to talk about God, well, you can talk about natural law or the universe, whatever point they connect with reality. And there's a, there's a basic principle, whether it's karma or you reap what you sow, there's a basic, basic principle that if you don't identify with and defend your neighbor, that person who's defenseless, the day can come, this is how you personalize it, the day can come when you're in a position where you're defenseless and you need someone to defend you. And if you've spent your life ignoring a category of people and letting them be genocided, then what goes around comes around. Yeah, we're, we're from New Jersey and I thought it was telling during the COVID lockdown that they actually shut down all restaurants, they shut down gun ranges, they shut down gun stores, shut down every conceivable business you could yeah. think of. They didn't shut down abortion clinics yeah, right. and they were they were open for business. And, um, it's genocidal. It's genocidal. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I, I was... Um, so we're all becoming like these babies. Yeah. We're all, if, if we let them keep getting power, especially the Marxists, what they did under the Bolsheviks, it can happen here, may God forbid, yeah, but it can yeah. happen here. We can all become, this curse comes upon us because we can all become just as defenseless as these children if we keep denying them justice. I, I say this with intense emotion looking at these signs this is an issue that's very important to me personally. What do you say to the people that look at this and say, you're disgusting charlatans for putting this kind of filth in front of people. I don't want to look at that. What's your argument against someone that thinks you're the bad person for showing this? Let me tell you what the problem is. When they see this, a lot of people have an aversion to truth. They don't really want to see the evil. They want to look at themselves as good. But in reality, all human beings, each and every one of us are fallen in our nature. We are all fallen. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross to save us from our sins. And a lot of these people are hard of heart and unrepentant of their sin. And there's a price to pay for it. Not just, you know, eternally, but also here in this life. And I believe, at the, because I've seen God work throughout history, and I am a student of history, and I've been a Christian for over 40 years, and I am going to tell you, I can testify to the truth. Americans need to turn away and repent of their sin. They yeah. need to turn away from it, because if they don't, yeah. they're going to feel it this time. I think, I think this election, I think this election was a, was a line in the sand drawn by Almighty God to America today. And people have to either turn away from this sin, or they're going to reap the consequences. Yeah. They're going to reap what they have sown. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll say, as a civil rights organization, uh, I think the right to life is one of the, one of the most important, if not the most important. So well, I appreciate you guys speaking uh, this message especially in a place like this that uh, a, a city like Washington that to me is full of depravity. So I, 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 I appreciate that. God bless you guys and thank God you for being you here. Too. God bless you Thank too. you. And, 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 hey, the thing about the depravity is that, is that these people, this is, it's their blood that they use as a sacrifice for these powers that, that overarch all of us in the media. And it's this witchcraft over this city and over this nation because this is the head of the yeah. nation. And it really is witchcraft. And Jonathan will say the same. Um, being at abortion clinics, you see witches there, and they gain power from this. And there's there's all these ritualistic things involved with it. If you talk to the girls coming out of there, um, all kind of rituals that they have that are very strange and pagan-like. Um, so 100%. Uh, this might sound like crazy talk, but they are. That's how they gain power. And if you guys have seen the, the PizzaGate stuff, the Adrenochrome, all those things. The Planned Parenthood here in DC. It's 1225 because of Christmas. Uh, they have a Moses in the bushes right there on the front. You can see little tiny crosses and hearts. It, 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 it's very, very demonic. And if people wow. don't want to look at it, let's criminalize it. I, just, look, if they don't want to look at it, let's You want to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm well, sorry um, I didn't get you. It's okay. Uh, women's power. No, just kidding. Um, well, I have told people you don't ever want to see a live abortion, but if you sat there and you saw it, you would... The reason why we show these pictures is because people don't realize what's really going on. They're in denial. If they were there in the room, they'd they'd pass out or terrible things would happen. That's why they push that movie unplanned because it kind of is a reenactment of Abby Johnson's experience. And there's tons of you're going to see this all the time in the abortion clinic, but they hide it. You know, they hide where the babies go. They hide different things. And and my also my comment to um, people that. In the Constitution, it says after you're born, you have rights. They want to keep the baby from being born to say they don't have rights, but you should have rights in your womb. But um, 
if they can prevent that from happening, it's like they can take your constitutional right away. But um, the baby, you're not allowing the baby to be uh, allowed to develop. And I think that's a good argument, too, because if I were to say, well, you're not allowed to be developed, then you wouldn't be here. So once they start understanding we all developed and grew in the womb to become out of the womb, like there's no difference. But they try to separate it to so you can believe otherwise well, that you don't have a right to abolish slavery actually uh, says all thank you no 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 thank you i appreciate you guys honestly yeah, I I had to no, get up. let me some jersey